go to some other shop and, and buy it. And then when you have the demand given here and also the deliveries and the items on, on stock, we will actually lose the sales of 1,305 items in uh, February. And then the cost will be of, of the lost sales will be 1,305 multiplied by the profit, which is not actually given in, in this example. Uh, but when we have the back ordering or the backlogging strategy, we still will have 160 items on stock in January. But then, instead of zero inventory, we have to deal with a negative stock, and we will have a negative stock of 1,305 items in February. And then we can see that in the remaining month, we will have more items than actually the demand. So then we will reduce the negative stock from month to month. Also here we have two different strategies. One is the strategy which we can call the first in, first out, which means that the orders which is placed in February will be delivered as soon as possible. And then the new orders from March will also be delayed to the next month and to the next month and so on. But we have also another strategy, which is called the last in first out, which means that the orders in March may get delivered immediately. And then those who are waiting from February will get delivered when you have some excess inventory, which is the difference between the demand and the number of items. Uh, on, on stock or the deliveries in each month. So here, looking at the inventory level, we will in February in, or in, in March we will get 80 new. That means that we will reduce the negative inventory by 80. And then in April we will reduce even more by 605. Then we will get minus 700. Uh, is that correct? 625? Yeah, well, never mind. It, it should be. Um, 605, let's use the numbers I have here, uh, which means that uh, you will have a negative of uh, inventory of 700, a negative inventory of 480, and at last, an inventory of 1,020. And so, if we now try to summarize the number of, uh, uh, of items uh, to be back ordered, which means that we had a total of minus 1,305 in the first strategy, but now we will have the sum of all the negative inventory here which is a total of 310. Three thousand seven hundred and ten. And then we will have a cost of the strategies here, which is in this uh, problem said to be a penalty of, of 10 for uh, each item back ordered. So when you have a thief first in, first out strategy, you will have 3,710 multiplied by the penalty of 10 per item. If you have a last in, first out strategy, you will only have a delay on the February items, uh, but then you will probably also have a larger penalty for a larger delay. So this is not included as in, in numbers in this uh, um, in, in this example, but this should also be possible to uh, to, to measure or or which is the actual situation in some situation. You still have one thousand three hundred and five items back ordered 
and they will be delivered, some in March, some in April, some in May, from those who have uh, ordered in, in February. So here you will have a larger penalty. <coughs> so this shows the, uh, the differences between these two different uh, uh, strategies, which uh, can be uh, different in different types of, of, of markets. Sometimes you will lose the sale, sometimes you are able to back order and deliver at a later stage, but then you will have a penalty for a delayed delivery. It could be paperwork for your administration uh, people, or it could be a discount or any other uh, thing for, for the customer, because the person has to, to wait for the delivery. So. Of course, here uh, we only talk about the penalties, but uh, some uh, other costs should also be included, of course, because we have inventory cost, we have cost of storing inventory, uh, which will be also costly and need to be, be considered when you are making up a plan. So, let's now continue to the exact model, the model for determining the optimal order size and then we have some uh, assumption and this the first assumption here that we are not dealing with a negative inventory so you should be aware of this sometimes you even should plan with a negative in, uh, inventory because it's uh, cheaper to pay some kind of penalty for the customers that will have a delayed delivery than to store a large amount of inventory but for the simple so-called EOQ, economic order quantity model, which we will show now, then we don't, one of the assumptions is that we are not able to use uh, or, or to plan with a negative inventory. So here, these are the assumptions for the simple EOQ model. One, the first one is that you have a fixed demand. You have, in this case, denoted as the lambda Greek letter lambda, units per unit time. Usually given per year, but also sometimes given per month or week or even also per day. But the demand is fixed. You know that the demand will be the same for all the coming time periods within the planning period. Shortages are not allowed and then we don't have to deal with the problem of lost sale or back ordering or penalty. Um, Orders are received instantaneously, which will be relaxed later, but here in the simple model, we will receive order all the time. Uh, and order quantity is fixed at the number Q per cycle, and this can be proven to be the optimal. So that is the problem, and this, this is the uh, EOQ model or the EOQ formula will find the optimal value of Q, the optimal order size, according to the given uh, uh, va values of, of the variables. And we have a cost structure with ordering cost, which is a fixed cost, cost of placing one order, and also a variable cost, which is dependent on the number of items to order. And in addition, we have the holding cost given as H per unit held per unit time. Could be given as uh, uh, a cost per st for storing one item in one year, or eventually any other unit, time unit. <coughs> so the objective here is to find the optimal value of Q for minimizing the average cost per unit time. <coughs> and now Let's look at this model, which is uh, the inventory level in this simple model, 
where you have a fixed or deterministic demand and the slope here will be minus the demand, the demand rate which is given as a certain number of items per year or when you have the demand per year you can easily also find per month, per week or per day or any other time unit. And we are ordering Q items each time we are placing a new order, we will, uh, we will order the same number of items and we will have a maximum stock at this level and then it will be reduced at the same rate until it reaches zero and then we will place a new order and get a new delivery. So here, this is the time axis and this capital T is now called the cycle time, the time for one cycle, the time between one order and the next order, how much time this order of this Q item will last. <coughs> and we will now look at a simple model with three different cost elements. And let's call this the G of Q. G is the cost function and Q is uh, then the number of items to order, which is the variable in this model. And we are dealing with three different cost elements. One is the ordering cost, which we remember was um, yeah, shown here. Fixed and marginal order cost. We are now dealing with the fixed order cost, which is the K, which is given as a an amount of money for each time you are placing a new order. And to find the cost over a full time period, which is usually one year, we need to multiply this K value with the number of orders within that year or that time period. So here we have a k value, a constant, the amount of money to pay each time you will place an order. And this should be multiplied by the lambda, which is the demand given in a demand per year, divided by the q, the number of orders, number of items in one order. So the demand is the number of uh, the demand for one particular year, and the Q is the number per of items in one order. Dividing the lambda to Q will give you the number of orders in one full year. So we also should deal with the second part here, which is the holding cost, which is a cost of H per unit held per unit time and this will be found by looking at the, the average level of the stock which is one half of the order size Q multiplied by this H value. On average when you have this situation here on average, you will have one half Q on stock. Sometimes it will be above, sometimes below, but on, but on average, you will have one half of the order size. <coughs> and in addition, we need to include what we call the purchase cost, which can be seen as the second part of the order cost here, the C multiplied by X. And this will be the cost, uh, how much to pay for the full number of items. And here, in one year, you have a demand of lambda, which is the demand rate per year, multiplied by the C value, the cost of one item, the value of one item. 
So this is now the cost function with these three cost types. The ordering cost, number of orders in one year multiplied by the cost of placing one order. The holding cost, the average size of the stock, which is one half of the order size Q, multiplied by H, which is the uh, which is the cost of storing one item of inventory for one full year. And at last, the purchase cost, which is the annual demand, lambda, multiplied by the cost or the value per item. What is very important here is that the time unit for the lambda and the time unit for the H is the same. This is a quite common mistake, and it's also some kind of trap in, uh, in some exam and, uh, and assignment problems, that you are given, for example, a demand per year and a holding cost per month, and then you need to, um, to recalculate at, uh, uh, one of them to, to find the same time unit for these two variables. Because the demand and the holding cost should be given in the same time unit. So, we have now this cost function, which is the well simplified version of real life, of course, as all models are, but these are the three relevant cost elements in this cost function here. Ordering cost, holding cost, and purchase cost. We can also, quite easy, find the length of one order cycle, the T value in this figure, say that the T, the cycle time, is given as the order size Q divided by the lambda, the demand for one year. Then you will get a fraction, usually, uh, as in, in T as a fraction of a year. If you are ordering one twelfth of the annual demand, which means that you are ordering one the demand for one month at uh, each time, then the t will be uh, will be one twelfth, uh, which is uh, the fraction of a year that this order of q will last. <coughs> so, how should we now find out the optimal value of Q, the optimal order size? The order size that will give us the smallest costs according to this cost function. And when, we might remember from the mathematics, when we have a function and we want to find the optimal value of the variable, the variable is Q, all the others are constants, which are known values, but Q is now the variable here. And we want to find the optimal value of the variable, we should derive the cost function. So, let's now derive the G function with respect to the variable Q. Deriving this part where Q is in the denominator means that we will have minus the constant lambda k divided by Q to the power of 2. This is the derived of the first part of this cost function, the derived of the order cost part. Then let's derive the second part, which is the holding cost. The derived of one half h multiplied by the variable q. Deriving q to the power of 1, then it will return 1. And we have h divided by 2 left. And deriving the last part, lambda, the demand, multiplied by c, the value the purchase cost, and deriving these two constant with respect to Q, deriving a constant will give zero. So this is 
an expression for the derived cost function with respect to the variable q. And now, from the mathematics, we might remember that when we want to find the optimal value of a function, we should put the derived formula equal to zero. Because the derived function is an expression for the slope or the gradient of a curve. And here, if we have a maximum, we want to find a maximum point, or actually we want to find the minimum point now, the minimum cost, which is a similar function like this, then the gradient will be zero at the optimal point here. So when the gradient is zero, means that the slope of the function is equal to zero, which means that we have an optimal point, either a maximum or a minimum point. So when this derived function is equal to zero, it means that this lambda k divided by q to the power of 2 should be equal to h divided by 2. When this happens, we will have the optimal value of q. And we can solve this by respect to q and find that q should be equal to lambda k multiplied by 2 and divided by h and take the square root since we have q to the power of 2 here. This formula is called the E of q formula or Wilson's formula or Harris's formula, many names. In the textbook, it's called the EOQ formula. Uh, Harris was actually the one who developed this formula in uh, 1913, I think. But Wilson, which is also has his name on this formula, was the first one to, to start using it extensively in, the, in, uh, in real life and proving that uh, this gave the was actually a good strategy to find the optimal size of the Q value, optimal order size. This is very essential in inventory planning. So far, we are, well, we have shown it in a very simple example, but this formula is also used with, uh, in, in more advanced situations where we actually include more uh, aspects than we, uh, we use in this very simplified situation, because this is a very uh, robust formula and it is used as a basis for the more advanced formula with more advanced uh, situations. Um, we can also look at the properties shown here that the Q value equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by the order cost multiplied by the demand and divided by the holding cost and then, of course, when k, the ordering cost, is increasing, then the nominator will be higher, and then the result will be that the order size will also be higher. And similar, if the annual demand is increasing, it means that the order size should increase. And the opposite, if any of them are decreasing, then the order size should also decrease. And when the holding costs are increasing, it means that this is in the denominator and it will result in a smaller Q value, which also seems quite logical. If the cost of storing inventory gets higher, then you should not store as much inventory and then you should have a smaller order size. If the order cost, cost of ordering, is getting higher, you should not order that many uh, items uh, or that many times, and then you should order more items every time you are placing one order. And the Q will then uh, change as the uh, square root of these uh, quantities.
And Q is independent of the proportional order cost, except that it relates to the value of H, which is found as here, the I multiplied by the C value. H is I, or use capital I here, which in this case is the internal interest rate, the cost of storing one item of inventory in percentage of the value, and multiplied by the C, the cost, or the purchase cost of one item. So here, the H value is found as the internal interest rate multiplied by the value of the item, but the order size Q is independent of the purchase cost, the last part of the cost function here, because this will be a constant. Even if you are ordering once a year or 1,000 times a year, this will be a constant, the value of the total annual demand. Later in this course, we will look at situations where this is not the situation anymore, because if you have the option of getting a discount, if you're ordering more than a certain uh, amount of, uh, of items, you will get a lower price. Then, of course, this part of the function will also be dependent on Q, and then you have to include that in the cost function to find the optimal order size Q. Here we can look at the cost curve, and now we are focusing on the two first part of the cost function. The purchase cost can actually be put at the bottom here and just move everything to a higher level, but it will not af affect actually the, uh, the, the curve here. So we should now fo only focus on the ordering cost, the cost of placing orders, and the holding cost, the cost of storing inventory. <coughs> and then we can see that the first part here, ordering cost, is dependent on Q, and when Q is decreasing, you will have a hyperbolic curve here, which will make the ordering cost lower, the ordering cost will decrease when Q is increasing. With a higher Q, you don't have to order that many times. With a low Q, you will have a higher ordering cost. And the other part here, the holding cost, will be a linear function, looking like this. One half of the orders order size Q multiplied by the H value, cost of storing inventory. If you add these two curves together, you will get the graph which looks here. And what is special for this graph is that the minimum point, the optimal order size is exactly at the time, at the intersection point between these two cost elements. Where the ordering cost and the holding cost are exactly at the same level, this is where the optimal Q value is. This will be the minimum point, the minimum uh, value of the cost function. So this is quite important to know about, that the minimum cost will be where the ordering cost and the holding cost is exactly at the same level. At least this is the situation for these simplified models we are looking at here. So before we end for today, I will go through one uh, example from the textbook, uh, page 212. And uh, here we are talking about the uh, pencil, a very well, small uh, or cheap item, but uh, the principles will be uh, exactly the same when you have other items with, with uh, uh, higher uh, costs. Ahem. <clears throat> 
<coughs> so we are given pencils sold at a rate of 60 per week. So the lambda is here given as 60 per week and 60 per week if we want this rate in the annual demand we have to multiply by 52 which will give us a total rate of 3120 per year Uh, we are given the purchase price of the pencils, which is two cents, not very expensive. And we are also given the sales price, which is actually not important in this case, because the sales price, of course, it, it is important uh, according to the profit, but when our aim is to reduce the costs or the ordering strategy, it doesn't really matter how much the profit is. Because the cost function will be the same and the profit will be the difference between the sales, the, the income and the total cost. But anyway, we are given the sales price here as the P, which was said to be 15 cents. And we are given an order cost, a K value of 12. And we are given an interest rate of 25%. So, as mentioned, very important to remember that we need to make sure that the demand and the holding cost are given in the same time units. Here we have found the demand per year and the interest rate is also given is an, uh, as an interest rate per year, internal interest rate. If we now want to find the H value, we know that the holding cost will be the interest rate multiplied by the purchase cost. 0 0.25 multiplied by 0 0.02, which is not very much, 0 0.005. This is the holding cost in this example. And let's now find the EOQ value. We have all the parameter values. We can see that EOQ, the economic order quantity, also denoted as the Q star, the optimal value of Q, is the square root of 2 multiplied by the demand 3120 and uh, multiplied by the k ordering cost 12 divided by h holding cost or interest rate multiplied by the purchase cost or the value of the item, which now is 0 0.005, which gives us an optimal Q, Q star of 3870 in this case. So here the optimal number of pencils to buy every time will be this number, 3870, which actually is higher than the annual demand. Because this product, pencils, very cheap to, um, to store, uh, not very high holding costs, and then you should have a relative high order size. Because the or ordering cost of 12 is so much higher than the holding cost shown here. Uh, we can also easily calculate the cycle time, which is the Q value divided by the demand, which is 
3,870 divided by the annual demand of 3,120, which is 1.24 years. Since this demand is given as the demand for one year. So here, we, uh, the optimal policy in, the, in this case is to buy 3,870 pencils and then you will have a stock that will last for 1.24 years. Let's also calculate the different costs and then the ordering cost. will be uh, it will uh, lambda divided by q multiplied by k which now is uh, 3120 divided by 3870 multiplied by k which is 12 um, we are comparing the different costs as the annual cost and this even if in some years you might not have uh, order cost at all because you might order at the end of one year and the next order will be at the beginning of the year two years fr fr from that uh, after 1.24 years but still we are calculating uh, this policy according to some kind of average over a longer period. So then this number will be less than 1. But on average you will have 3120 divided by 3870 orders per year. And you have to pay a cost of 12 for each, uh, each time you are placing an order. And similar, hauling cost. will be the average size of the stock multiplied by h, which is 1 half multiplied by 3870 multiplied by 0 0.005. Both these um, expressions will give us 9.67. This is 9.67 and this is 9.67, which will show the situation here that you will get the optimal policy where the ordering cost and the holding cost are exactly at the same level. So this point is the sum of the or, uh, ordering cost and the holding cost, which is exactly at the same level. So, we'll also just show this, which is the sensitivity analysis before we quit for today. Uh, here we have the cost function with the two first, the holding cost and the ordering cost. We're not including the, the purchase cost here. And we can also show that the optimal average annual cost will can be shown as the cost, well the deviation if you are not using exactly the correct value of Q, because this can be hard to define. Um, it means that uh, if you have a deviation from Q, uh, finding the exact value of K might be difficult. It's not always easy to calculate how much it will cost to place one order. Uh, and similar, the interest rate, very hard to, to estimate the correct value of the internal interest rate. So even if you are not able to find the exact correct values here, you might get a wrong value of Q. But still, since this cost curve is rather flat, you will have, a, even if you have a deviation within reasonable uh, value from Q, you will not have very high deviation on the cost function. So that means that that is one of the reasons that this 
EOQ formula or Wilson's or Harris's formula are so uh, ex extensively used because it is so robust. Even if you are not able to find the exact value of the order size Q because of uncertainty in the parameter values, you will, within a certain uh, a reasonable range here, not have a very high deviation of the co uh, of the cost curve. Not much increase in cost according to the uh, to the optimal value. So I think we quit there for today, and then this will be the focus for the the coming lectures, both in chapter four when we are talking about the fixed or known demand situation, and also in chapter five when we have to include the situation where we have uh, stochastic or uncertain demand. <laughs>